Please remain standing, join arms together for El Shalom. So one of the nicest things about uh, being the rabbi on the bima, as opposed to being down there, is that if you have an aha moment, you actually can share it. 
So I had an aha moment during the Amida, which I want to share. Uh, of course, if you're only in the congregation, you have an aha moment, you have to kind of hold it for a while. Some people were in a class of mine some years ago. Uh, I did a class on tefillah, on prayer. I said, if you have an aha moment during a service, write it in the sidur, whether you're comfortable doing it then during the service or when you get home. And a handful of people who've done that have literally a gold mine of aha moments in their sidur over the course of years. Not hopefully on page 75, bread, milk, and eggs, but a real aha moment that kind of takes it to another place. Uh, so think about it for yourself. But here's the, my aha moment during the Amidah. Uh, I've mentioned before, many of you know, that the orientation of the sanctuary is not exactly eastward, as is supposed to be the case. The, the site that we were on didn't allow for it. So the way we corrected for it, we built the building as we were supposed to, but the carpeting gives us the orientation of due east. So the lines on the carpet actually face directly east, so if you didn't know that. In addition, the other orientation is that we have on the east wall a Mizrah, which literally means east. A Mizrah is traditional in many uh, Jewish households, certainly in synagogues throughout the world, that an artistic rendition, usually of Israel or Jerusalem, is put on the eastern world wall, which also reminds us of that we always face eastward. So, even if you're sitting in that section, during the Amidah, you should be turning that way, not to the center, which would be otherwise the way the seats are structured, so that you use the lines on the carpet or you look at the Mizrach. So I'm standing on the floor and I'm looking at the Mizrach, reminded of myself of a conversation I had yesterday on the phone. I was on the phone with a woman who runs an organization in Israel called Yahel, Y-A-H-E-L. Uh, I just agreed to join the board of this organization. They do fairly young, about three years old. Uh, they're doing service learning projects in Israel for Jews from all over the diaspora, mostly North America, who go to Israel to do community service work in Israel. A very talented woman, and she asked me to join the board, so we had a conversation yesterday. And she says to me that one of their projects is in a place called Gedera. And she mentioned the name of a friend of mine, a rabbi from Jerusalem, who has been doing some teaching for them. And she was asking me if I might do the same thing when I go to Israel periodically uh, during the year. So she says, so Levi comes down to us to Gadara from Jerusalem. So I get a little confused when I say, I said, Don, I said, but Gadara is north of Jerusalem, not south. What do you mean coming down? She says, when you live in Jerusalem, when you go anywhere else, you're always going down. <laughs> okay? So when you think like North America, we think if you're going to Atlanta, you're going down to Atlanta or going up to New York, right? If you live in Washington, right? Uh, but in Israel, the orientation is different. It's on a different set of uh, indices or, or you know, uh, uh, dimensions, so to speak. Uh, and the one thing to think about is that Zion, we have a line in the Torah, Ki Mitzion Tetzei Torah, which if you think about it linear, linearly, it's like out of Zion, meaning Israel comes Torah. But actually the word Zion, which is at the root of the word Zionism, suggests that Zionism represents a higher place. It's not just the geographical land of Israel, because as we know, Israel sometimes falls short of the highest standards of Zion. But Zion can be anywhere that we think about how we get to a higher level in terms of what our aspirations are in terms of Judaism. So next time we do the Amidah, think east, think Zion, think up, and think aspiration. It's part of what the whole service is supposed to be doing for us. So we'll turn back uh, to Yismachu. Page 309. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, 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 shalom
to the Bima, if you would turn to page 772, Elena will read for us a selection called Social Action by Jack Reamer. We cannot merely pray to God to end war, for the world was made in such a way that we must find our own path of peace within ourselves and with our neighbor. We cannot merely pray to God to root out prejudice, for we already have eyes with which to see the good in all people, if we would only use them rightly. We cannot merely pray to God to end starvation, for we already have the resources with which to feed the entire world, if we would only use them wisely. We cannot merely pray to God to end despair, for we already have the power to clear away slums and to give hope if we would only use our power justly. We cannot merely pray to God to end disease, for we already have great minds with which to search out cures and healings if we would only use them constructively. Therefore, we pray instead for strength, determination, and willpower to do instead of merely to pray to become instead of merely to wish that our world may be safe and that our lives may be blessed. Page 381, Reader's Kaddish. <laughs> Bagalau is man kariv im rame, yesh me roba me vorach, le ala mula me amaya. It barach ve ish tabach, vit far vit roman vit nase, vit adar vit ale vit ala, she made a good shabrihu. Leila min kobir hata ve shirata. Tushbechata venechemata da miran be amarim ramen. Titka belziloton uve uteron de chobet Yisrael. Kodam avon divishmaya vim ramen. Amen. Yesh lamarab 
ומן שמי רחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל במרומן. אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל במרומן. אמן. ובי ג'ונתן סטרן וג'ורג' שרפסטין לבימה תאופן ניו יורק. And Matt Squire is going to help lead us in the Torah service. Page 383. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadzol Adonai
So Matt, last time you were on the Bema, your voice was a little higher. It's kind of dropped the whole octave since you were last up here, okay? I remember, I remember. It's the way that things happen. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. So it's my uh, distinct honor this morning uh, to introduce someone whose name has been mentioned uh, in this sanctuary many times, uh, but who, except for a video on the Purim of 2011, I believe, uh, when we had a little greeting, I don't know if you remember, Pastor Johnny, we did that video on the grounds of where, you, where we were going to build the school, right? And you did a video which we showed here during one of our big holidays, which is coming up next week, actually. So, but for that video, many of you have never uh, met Pastor Johnny, uh, and it's really an honor to have you in our community. Uh, I'm going to invite you up in a few minutes to share some thoughts, uh, but I first want to frame uh, what we've done in conjunction with our Haiti project here at Adat Shalom, because it's something uh, that I think we should all take tremendous pride in. Uh, if you picked up the flyer on the way in, you see a kind of an outline of our Haiti project. We launched it, uh, actually first, I should take one step further back. I met Pastor Donnie in 2010 uh, when I was uh, in Haiti with my wife, with Sandy, uh, in conjunction with an organization in Israel called Tevel Betzedek, which had gone to Haiti literally within a month of the earthquake in 2010 to do relief work uh, in Haiti, uh, not only disaster relief, but actually, more importantly, community development work. And the director of the organization in Israel asked me to come in and do some uh, teaching for the Israelis who were on the ground uh, in Haiti. Uh, and that extended, uh, once I got on the ground, not only to do some uh, teaching of Jewish sources to contextualize the work they were doing in Haiti in the context of Judaism, but then I wound up speaking to uh, more and more Haitians as it turned out, my translator for my work with Haitians, because my Creole is actually worse than my Yiddish, <laughs> uh, my translator turned out to be Pastor Johnny. Uh, understand that the Israelis, the team of Israelis, or about nine of them, were working with about 40 or so Haitians because, as is the case after disaster reliefs, the, the relief teams leave after a year, 18 months, two years at the maximum. And the question is, what do you leave behind? And so the Israelis, who actually are quite good at it, that's an understatement, quite amazing at it, maybe the best in the world, uh, were working very hard to help Haitians who were going to stay after their departure uh, to learn about how, things, how they could create a women's empowerment program uh, for women to create some resources, uh, after school classes, developing a community center. And it was those Haitians that was my first opportunity to speak to Haitians. And Pastor Johnny was uh, my translator. 
Uh, one very sweet moment I rem remember was that uh, several days later, I don't think you don't even know the story, Pastor Johnny, uh, on Friday night at the house that Tebel B'Tzedek rented in Leogan, which is where Pastor Johnny is from, uh, we did a Kabbalah Shabbat service for all the Israelis. We also invited all the Jews we could identify in Haiti. There were a handful working at NGOs around Leogan, and actually two staff members from the U.S. Embassy in Port-au-Prince drove what is a harrowing three-hour drive in the dark uh, to our little house in Leogon to join us for Kabbalah Shabbat services. It was quite amazing. Uh, so we did the service in, in, the, uh, in the house. And during that service, I asked people to share a highlight from the week. So one of the Israelis, who actually was born in Russia, uh, had moved to Israel a few years earlier and had done the army and now was doing this work in Haiti, she says, my highlight moment was hearing your talk to the Haitians because I understood your English and understood his Creole. And what was so powerful was not just what you said, but how Pastor Johnny translated and improved what you said. <laughs> so it was like getting the, the, a Devar Torah in stereo, first in, in my lexicon and then in Pastor Johnny's lexicon. And that's how we first met. So, uh, Pastor Johnny became first my translator and then my friend. Uh, we spent quite a lot of time, and, and my understanding of Haiti and the circumstances going on there was really uh, as a result of the conversations I had with Pastor Johnny and his understanding about what challenges faced his community, faced his country, and how he, as one individual, a young pastor with whom I could identify with uh, very much, how he, in one, as one person, could respond to it. Subsequently, uh, we have sent two other missions to Haiti, uh, service missions, uh, in 2011 and 2012. Uh, the first one, uh, we had 18 people. Last year, we had about 13 people or so. Uh, and soon after I came back from Haiti from the first visit, we launched the Haiti Project here. Uh, and even here, there's a lesson that I want to underscore, because if you follow the issue of disaster relief, you know, sometimes in a desire to be helpful, we, the Western world, the Northern Hemisphere, do more harm than good. Because you drop a ton of money on a very poor part of the globe, and then you're there for six months or so, and then you're gone, and nothing could be worse. And so the way we structured our Haiti project was, I proposed that we would support the school that Pastor Johnny had started in Leogan uh, by committing, over the course of five years, $100 a year, not more. Not more. A few people less, that was okay. But we didn't want to drop a lot of money, and we wanted to be there for the long haul, not to send them several thousand dollars one year, nothing the next year, and that's how we structured the program. At this point in time, there are 85 households in Adat Shalom who become partners of the Haiti Project, which if you do the math, means that we've raised over $40,000 to support uh, Pastor Johnny's school, the NICL uh, in Haiti. For those who haven't seen it yet, you might remember that after the second mission we had up on the Bima here for a while, a plaque that Pastor Johnny's school gave to us as a thank you for our support. Uh, this week, it got mounted on the wall, so please pay attention as you walk from the sanctuary to the Oneg. On the wall between the bathrooms and the social hall, we have that plaque is now up on the wall for Haiti Corner and two blown up pictures of uh, our first service mission to Haiti, so that'll be our Haiti Project Corner. Just so you know, uh, I know some of you have been part of the Haiti Project, you've been getting reports uh, regularly about what we're doing. Just to give you some sense, uh, just this past year in 2013, we dispersed about $10,000. The largest portion went to underwrite teacher salaries at the NICL because the tuition doesn't cover the cost of the school. Tuition for the school year is, maybe it's been raised for inflation, but when we last spoke, it was $76. Is that still the amount of money? That's the annual tuition. So it doesn't cover teacher salaries. So our funding helps to underwrite the teacher salaries. It also covered 25 of the 170 children in school, K through eighth grade, could not afford $76 a year. And so part of our money went to underwrite the, the tuition for those 25 students. And finally, this past year, we had a project where uh, the situation security-wise in Haiti is quite serious. And so Pastor Johnny wanted to create security both for the property of the school as they were building it and for his children. And so we helped pay for a wall and a gate to be built around the compound where the school exists and where Pastor Johnny also lives. Uh, you should know, uh, in terms of our Haiti project, 
the reason we got into the, uh, into the area of doing service missions was that after we started raising money for Pastor Johnny's school, uh, people literally came up to me and said, we're happy to have given the money, but we also would like to go there and have the experience. And that's how the service mission came about. We've done two now, and if you picked up the flyer on the way in, we're now planning a third service mission for December of 2014, uh, about uh, 10 months from now, and we hope some of you will consider doing it. Uh, I want to just recognize uh, the people who've really been, there have been so many people who've been helpful in this project, uh, and in fact, Pastor Johnny got here Thursday night. He'll be leaving Tuesday morning. Uh, we have built an itinerary for him, which is uh, quite uh, comprehensive. Uh, he's had meetings all day yesterday downtown, and the same on Monday. Uh, tomorrow morning, he'll be at a church uh, in Bethesda. Uh, and I can't even mention all the people in Adat Shalom who helped me build that itinerary for him to make sure that his time here uh, would be valuable. But I especially want to invite the four people who've been center to our Haiti project uh, to stand. Uh, Bill Halpern and Marsha uh, Teichman have co-chaired the Haiti project. We would stand, please. Marsha and Bill. Where's, where's Marsha? There she is, okay. And uh, Pam Summers and Wendy Swire have really quarterbacked our service missions. If you would stand, Pam and uh, Wendy. Um, so just wanted to recognize the work that you all have done. It's been really amazing. And we have a lot to be proud of. I'm hoping that as a result of Pastor Johnny's visit, more of you choose to become part of our Haiti Project. We'd love to expand. We've recognized all the people who are part of the Haiti Project on the back of the flyer. We want to kind of give honor to them and thanks to them and hopefully get you to think about joining that. And on the other flyer, we hope that more of you will think about uh, possibly joining us next December in Haiti, uh, a mission that I will lead along with Pam. Uh, and if you're interested in that, you should definitely come to, uh, after our owning today at 1.15 there'll be a chance to interact with Pastor Johnny and hear more about the service mission because there won't be time for that right now. That'll be here in the sanctuary at 115. So with that by way of introduction, Pastor Johnny, we're so honored to have you in our community. Uh, we really want to thank you for the work that you've done for the families and children of Haiti, of Laogan, your particular community, and we're excited to have your words here this morning. Please. Shalom, everybody. <laughs> Shalom. And uh, it's a very, very great joy for me to to be here. Uh, you have to hear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And it's a very great pleasure for me to be here with you at Ada Shalom. And what I said. I was already explaining a lot of my speech. <laughs> and I, the things, some, most of things that I have, I will I say, and I know that you already know, have ideas about. And, but it is important to, um, for you to hear me explain about how you, your contribution is great for us and for the work that we are doing in Haiti. Um, the commune, commune of Leogan was one of the areas the most affected during the earthquake of 2010. And this has allowed many non-governmental organizations and assisting the people of this area depending on their area of intervention. This reality has allowed me to meet with members of Teve Bet Sedek, a Jewish organization who, which wanted to make intervention in the local locality of Gewe and the educational and social fields. And my meeting with members of Teve Bet Sedek has been on here a great source of satisfaction and accomplishment for me. 
I've been asked to develop the curriculum for the literacy course and to ensure training session for teachers of literacy and all the teachers were volunteers. And with the presence of Israel, that we call again Tevet Bet Sedek and the area of Geren, friends from above, um, from abroad, who are Ayes, came from time to time to visit the area and present lectures for voluntary teachers on various topics, which are always informative character. Therefore came the arrival of the Rabbi Said and Leogad. The Rabbi Said should present a lecture for teachers on the origin and the condition of human being, according to the book of Genesis from the Bible. And excuse me because the call made me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I was talking about um, the arrival of the Rabbi Sid and Leo Gan, and um, responsible of Tevet Besedek as um, the Rabbi said to have a speech with the group of the teachers and all of the person who work and with the Tevet Besedek. And I speak English. They know uh, that I speak English, but they used to have other people translate for, for them and the Tevet Bet Sedek. But for the speech of the rabbi, and they know that the rabbi will use the Bible and talk about words from the Bible. And as they know that I am a pastor, they charge me to translate for the rabbi. And the teaching of the rabbi was for me and others, wonderful and fascinating. We have learned to consider the human being in a better way. According to his teaching, despite of the bad character that someone can show, we should not reject him because he has in him the sense of God. He is created in the image of God. And it was very deep for, for us. And the Sunday following, the rabbi and his wife was going to Eclair, and the, the church that I am ahead, to join my congregation and at the service Sunday morning. I invite him to, to speak at the service. And he used this time also to show us and the Sabbath Shalom song that we all liked. <laughs> and since then, it has been the beginning of a relationship with the rabbi and the other Shalom congregation, which now takes a formal scale. About the assistance that the NSA school received from the other Shalom congregation, let me quickly ex explain you a story about Anderson and Sheila, two kids from the school. And their parents, you know, we charge a little bit money because we are a private school. And he said it's a private school and we have to charge parents to pay tuition. But it's about 20, um, 87, 88. When we um, have, when you compare it to US dollars, it gives a, around 88 or 87 US dollars. And that the parents have to pay. And the parents of Sheila and, and their son, they owed money to the school and they could not present it in the office to set this issue. When I received the donation to support kids who are in trouble paying the tuition, 
And I called parents of Sheila and Anderson. I called them and I invited them to pass in my office so we can talk about it. And guess what? They didn't come because they were ashamed because they know perfectly they owe money to the office and they were afraid to come because they know it can be about asking the money. But as I insist, and I'm the director of the school, <laughs> and finally they, can, they get approved um, to, to see what about my calling toward them. And they were surprised. And they thought it was about asking the money, but they discovered it's about receiving money for their kids. And they were so happy, and they were surprised. And I'm so glad, because I didn't be mean with the parents of Sheila and Anderson, because Sheila is a so small girl. And, and this one also, and what is particular and for Anderson is the one who always have, has something to tell the, his director. Yeah, Anderson is the one who says, Pastor Johnny, oh, this morning you guess well. Oh, Pastor Johnny, oh, you are so handsome. <laughs> Oh, Pastor Johnny, you have a good looking. <laughs> and he's so cute, he's so cute, Anderson. And I'm so happy to receive this assistant and permit um, Anderson and Sheila and some other kids to receive. Because you know, and before they are quick. I remember I, have, I had a girl in, that, in my school, she was in sixth grade. And we were at the time to be in, to pass the sixth grade because at the sixth grade we have to pass an exam, a national exam for the kids before continue the school. The school. And that girl, the parent owed me money, and I, I was in the front institution to decide if I would give him because I suppose the director of the school received a card from the national office to give to the, to the kids and to let him participate to the national exam. And I was in, in front of the situation to deliver the card to that girl or to keep him to let, don't give her possibility to pass the exam, to go to, to submit the exam. And because they owed me money. And I told myself, Johnny, can you do something like this to to let the girl miss the exam because of money. And I sit with myself, I say, okay, Johnny, you will help her go. And I gave the card to the girl, to the, to the girl. And you know what? She was the best hire grade doing the exam for my school. And I'm so glad that I didn't be mean because they owed me money and the parent cannot give me money and it was, we can say, it, was, it will be right to, to, to keep the, her card and to not give it to her. But I didn't do it. I didn't do this and it was a, a success for me. Mm -hmm. And I have to thank you so much for the way that you are helping the NICL the NIC school and the way that you are helping to resolve the greatest problem that we have in Haiti now. Because it's, it is my, my understanding about Haiti's situation. Most of our problem come from the educational issue. And the way that you are acting, it's clearly show that you take part of resolving the <coughs> educational problem of Haiti. Thank you so much. Shalom. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you.
So, Pastor Johnny, it's an honor to have you here. Again, I want to uh, say that you're the one doing the, uh, where are you going? <laughs> okay. I think we all know Pastor Johnny is the one who does the work day in and day out. Uh, we're still providing a little bit of support uh, for his work, and it's really an honor to have you here. I want to take a few minutes to put our Haiti project into a larger context of what we here at Adash Shalom are all about, uh, where we are in the cycle of our Torah reading, uh, and what some of the deeper principles of Judaism happen to be. In, uh, in 1962, a book came out that many of you may know of uh, by Michael Harrington called The Other America. It's now more than 50 years ago. And Michael Harrington's book uh, opened a veil about half of America, which was the half that were essentially invisible. It was the half of America that lived in poverty. And in many ways, a lot of the uh, great society programs of the 60s, 70s, and beyond uh, were a response to that right raising of consciousness that Harrington's book uh, brought about. We're now at another threshold, I think, in, in kind of the development of the world. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the book, uh, but among the important books that have come out recently, is a book by Paul Collier called The Bottom Billion. It's, uh, I think the title is good for alliteration, but actually it understates the problem. Because as I wrote in a message to Adash Shalom uh, last month, half of the world's population lives on $2.50 a day or less. Half of the world's population, by my math, that's 3.5 billion people, not just 1 billion people. Billion, billion, 3.5 billion people. And part of what our Haiti project is about is to begin to raise our consciousness about the fact that we live in a bubble which is conspired to keep us ignorant of that other part of the world which is simply in some ways too painful to confront. We construct our lives in ways that we don't have to see it. For years, uh, in the program I ran for teenagers called Panim, we did as a, a kind of an eye opener and a conscious raiser, we did a program with homeless people. Because although the week was filled with meetings with public officials and uh, people who worked at nonprofits doing great work, what really touched the teenagers was when we took them out to the street to actually have conversations with people who had become homeless. And suddenly the people who they were taught by their parents to avoid because it might represent danger suddenly became people. They heard their stories. And the stories were all over the map. But suddenly we humanized a problem which is an otherwise theoretical. Now, I'm not an expert on international development. I have little to contribute to how we can best narrow the gap between the half of the world population that I described who live on $2.50 a day or less and the other half of the population of which we are part. But I do know a little bit about Judaism. In the book of Leviticus, we read the book that we start today. We read the first chapter of Leviticus. We read the commandment, Lo ta'amod adam re'acha. You are forbidden to stand by idly as the blood of your neighbor is being shed. Lo tamod adam re'acha. And right near that verse is the other very famous verse from the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, which says, the ahafta l'reacha kamocha. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, one word is common to both of those commandments from the book of Leviticus, the word re'acha. Re'acha, what does it mean? Most often, the word re'acha is translated as neighbor, neighbor. And the question is, who is our neighbor? In some ways, the most profound ethical question of all religions and of the world, it can be summarized in a song from Mr. Rogers. Who are the people in our neighborhood, our neighborhood, our neighborhood? Oh, who are the people in our neighborhood? Because how we answer that question determines how we respond. Truth be told, the majority opinion in the rabbinic tradition is that re'acha is defined as other Jews. Can't lie to you, that's true. It is the minority opinion that argues a broader interpretation of re'acha, and on that 
machloket, on that discussion, on that disputation, arises a whole set of consequences about how we behave and how we think about our lives. In fact, Ben Azai comes forward and argues with Rabbi Akiba. Rabbi Akiba says, you shall love your neighbors yourself, is the most important principle of the Torah. And Ben Azai says, I'm a little nervous about that because he knew that the rabbis were inclined because of their narrower worldview, that the definition of, if we say Reacha is only other Jews, that somehow there's a boundary to the people to whom we feel obligated. And the ultimate ethical question we have to ask ourselves is, how broad is our universe of obligation? How broad is our universe of obligation? If this were a class and I had a chart in front of me, I would draw for you a series of concentric circles with a dot at the middle. Imagine it in your mind. At the middle of the dot, is you. Each one and every one of us is the middle of a world filled with concentric circles. If we ask the question about who is our Recha, who are the people in our neighborhood, if we take the majority of rabbinic opinion that it's only other Jews, we would say, okay, so are Jews in trouble in Israel or in France or in Buenos Aires, and we have to respond. But if the person is not Jewish, they are kind of outside the second or third rung. Assume that the first rung may be your family and second rung is extended family and maybe the next rung are people who you live with, who you see regularly at work and at play. But if you think globally and if you draw a line out of the, out of the fifth or sixth circle and say all Jews are part of that universe of obligation, anyone beyond that, not my problem, man. Not my problem, man. That is the consequence of that narrow interpretation of Reacha which is why the teaching from Ben Azai is so important. And he says, the principle actually has to be that every human being is made in the image of God, which is actually the verse I was using for the lecture I gave when we first met, Pastor Johnny. Because when we say that every human being is made in the image of God, then we no longer have religion or race or nationality or political ideology as the boundary of our universe of obligation. There is no boundary on some levels, on that circle that you now have in your mind's eye, Pastor Johnny is on the outermost ring because we share neither faith, nor race, nor culture, nor background, or anything else. Certainly not language, although his English is way better than my Creole. <laughs> and so, we use, so one would say, quite naturally by the way, not bad people, average people, good people will say, I don't have the energy because I have only a limited amount of resources, of time, of energy to expend on people in need. And actually, you can quote me a verse from the, from the Bible, from the Talmud that says, which says, the poor of your own community come first. Prioritize those who are closer to yourself. That's actually a teaching in Judaism. And so it would be very easy, without you feeling any guilt whatsoever, to say, look, I'm helping myself, I'm helping my family, I help people in my immediate community, I feel an affinity for Jews around the world. It's only so much time and money and resources and energy, and so it's enough. But in fact, I think there's another strain of teaching in Judaism, which what Ben Azai comes to teach us. And that is to say, there is no boundary on our universe of compassion. There should be no boundary. And that the goal of Judaism is that even as we are allowed to prioritize ourselves, our family, the Jewish people, the Jewish community, the people in the Adash Shalom community. And we know what it's like when we support each other and what you give out comes back many times over, right? But the teaching is that the way we expand our humanity is by constantly pushing out to further and further outer rungs of those series of concentric circles. It's been observed that the field of disaster relief is a disaster. Since the earthquake in Haiti, $10 billion have been pledged to Haiti, not all of which has been expended, but all allocated, available. About a third of that money from the international community has been committed by the United States. Over and above that $10 billion is another $1.4 billion that came from private commitments of individuals making contributions. By the way, in the same way that we've tried to avoid 
that within a week or a month or three months of a disaster, whether it's the tsunami or the Haiti or the earthquake or the earthquake in the Philippines, we open our wallets, we write a check, and we say, terrible, horrible, I want to help, here's a check, whatever it's going to be for, okay? And then six months later, it's forgotten. We move on with our lives, okay? But what we also know is that when you add up the $10 billion and the $1.4 billion only from Americans, very little has happened. And so part of our Haiti project is not only to extend our universe of obligation from a Jewish point of view, it's also to make our support people to people, community to community, in a small way. And I know that although from a perspective of this congregation, $40,000 is very impressive. Let's not fool ourselves. We are not making a dent in the problem of global poverty. Let's not fool ourselves. We are not. But we're identifying one person who's done amazing heroic work founding a church, the Clare Church and the NICL school in 2007 with virtually nothing. When I was there, there was literally nothing. Pastor Johnny said to Tebel Betzedek, they were trying to do some work in Port-au-Prince, and they were having trouble in Port-au-Prince, and they contacted him, and they said, we'd like to do work for you. He says, are you prepared to work in a school whose main facility is essentially poles and plastic tarp? That's my school. They said, sure, we're coming. And starting with poles and plastic tarp, Pastor Johnny now has a school which we help to support. Essentially, we have made Pastor Johnny part of our family, part of our family. And so the issue of global poverty, which we can't quite wrap our brains around, and is way beyond my expertise and maybe all the expertise in this room combined, okay, suddenly is personal. Because Pastor Johnny is sitting now in our spiritual home at Adat Shalom. Last night he was at our Shabbat table. He will be at other, Shabbat, at other tables around this home, staying with the Swires. The gift that Pastor Johnny brought to us, actually, uh, and he was very intent, he said to me when he came to the house, do you have some envelopes? The gift he brought to us were two pictures. He gave to all the guests at our Shabbat table. One picture was a picture of his wedding to his beautiful wife, Gerin. And the other picture he brought us was of his wife and his newborn baby son, seven month old, who he's named Jacob. And he told us that he named his son Jacob because he had a dream about his son being connected to the people of Israel. And even more remarkably, he said that he shared his dream with his wife. His wife told him she had the same dream. So Pastor Johnny's family is now part of our family. And as he told the story about Anderson and Sheila, the school, we know that there are tens of thousands of Andersons and Sheilas, and we can't help them all, but now this is personal. Now this is personal. One last observation. There's been, uh, after each of our missions, there's been conversation in the congregation, which has been healthy. A question is, are our missions to go to Haiti to ourselves, are they cost effective? And the fact of the matter is, the answer is no. If you want to calculate how much money it costs to go to Haiti for a person, and you think about the work we do during the week, which for during the week is building houses, we, we partner with something called the Fuller Center on Housing. We have a great project there. What was nice is that uh, Pam tells me that when they went back the second year, and the first year that I was on the site, uh, we got maybe one and a half houses up, and when they went back a year later, they were what, 20, 30 or so, Fred? 23 houses were built in that year, okay? And we worked side by side with Haitians. But in reality, as gratifying as it was to bang, hammer, bang nails for a week, spending money on Rabbi Sid to bang hammer, ha nails for a week is not a good investment. <laughs> this I can tell you. There's a lot of other things that can be done with the same amount of, amount of money. But that's only if we use a calculation that's about dollars and cents and cost effectiveness. Because faith communities, and in this case, we as a Jewish community, are not in the business of doing calculations around cost effectiveness at all. It's a piece of it. We're in the business of expanding and raising consciousness. 
And that, I would suggest, has a far greater power than all the more cost-effective ways that you might be able to help some corner of the globe. Think about the fact that over the past 50 years, how we in America have been able to have our conscience raised around race, around gender, around sexual orientation, and understand that as a result of that, there have been major changes in public policy because the conscience of the community has been raised. That's our business. Our business is to understand that the dot at the middle of those series of consensus circles, you, is actually connected to the dot at the furthest outer circle whose name we didn't know four years ago, but now we give the name Pastor Johnny. So Pastor Johnny is both a person with a wife and a child and a school and a congregation who we're supporting, but he also represents all those people who are beyond the realm of the people we think are part of our universe of obligation. And if we can move our conscience just one iota to one more rung, we're fulfilling the basic commandment to try in some way to love our neighbor as we would love ourselves and help ourselves. It is true that on some levels, when you think about these things, you can say, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, I don't have the money. But here's the good news. What we know in the area of faith is that love and compassion are not finite resources. Love and compassion can always be expanded, can always be expanded. Pastor Johnny told a story last night which actually made this point. I identify with him in a lot of ways because he's trying to build a community, right? Build a school. He got married a couple years ago and his wife announces to him six months later that she's pregnant. It wasn't part of his plan. And he said to us all at the table last night, he says, I wasn't all that happy about it because I have things to do. I have a congregation to build, a school to build. I've got children who need me. And he had some tough times with his wife, right? His family started giving him a hard time. And after his son was born, he, to this moment, and he teared up as he told the story, he can't believe how much he loves his son because he found that his compassion and his love was not finite. It can always be expanded. And that's what a Haiti project is about. It's a way for this community to understand that with all the things we do, it doesn't mean that the Haiti project is more important than other projects. It simply means that our capacity for love and compassion and caring indeed no, no any limits. I will say this, that as a result of thinking about this issue, because we want more people to have the experience of encountering people who are in need, as of next summer, we already had our first meeting about this, uh, there's a commitment in Adat Shalom to do not only a regular service mission to Haiti, which we hope to continue long into the future, but they're also starting in the summer of 2015, there will be a week-long service mission to some place within a 200-mile radius. And so if Haiti is not your thing, because of language or heat or work or effort or distance or, or finances, we're hoping to start cultivate an ethic of service in this community because that is how we walk the talk of Judaism. That's how we make the lessons of Vayikra, the Haftalarecha Kamocha, you shall love your neighbor yourself, be something that we actually live and not just talk about. Shabbat Shalom. Pull up our Torah readers and gabbais. I would, by the way, if you uh, hang in there, Pastor Johnny is going to be leading some singing during our Musaf time, so hopefully you'll be part of that as well. He's brought some special songs to share with us and to teach.
Shalev, Harriet Sugarman, Lalia Lishana, Baruch Shinatan Torah, and Mo Israel, the Kushato. We are in Leviticus, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, which is page 757 in the old plow, the, with the lighter blue cover, or 660 in the new plow. Barhu et Adonai Hambarach. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Kirvanu Levado Tov. Enatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vayikra el Moshe, Vayidaber Adonai Elav, Meohel Moed Lemor, Daber el Bnei Yisrael Vamrata Lehem, Adam, Ki Akriv Mikem Karban, Ladonai, Min Habehema, Min Habakar Umin Hatzon, Takrivu et karban chem. Imola karbano min habakar. Zachar tamim yakrivenu. El petach o hel moed yakrivoto. Lirzono lifne adonai. So you're not going to believe this. It's <laughs> good that I built up a little bit of credibility to Dr. Shalom, but Harry Sugarman is celebrating her 70th birthday. That's true. <laughs> hard to believe. Hard to believe. For me too. Yeah. Uh, I guess you're trying to keep up with your, with your good friend Hannah, who was on the BIM a couple weeks ago, yeah, celebrating her 70th. She beat me to it. Uh, but we're so happy to celebrate with you, and you've been such a great contributing member of the community and leader in the community, and uh, want to celebrate this moment with you with the Misha Berach. Misha Berach, Avotenu Rav Rahmi Tzach Yaakov, Vimotenu Sarov Rachel Rachel Belaya, Rech Et, your Hebrew name? Her Shaleb Bat Shimon Ben Menacha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you <laughs> said, right, little Yiddish, right. <laughs> so we, right, so we bless Harry Sugarman on the occasion of her birthday. As she has found nourishment throughout her life up to the present time, may she continue to be protected and filled with life and happiness, enjoy many more years of life and blessing. May your loved ones rejoice in her. May all of us join her in for prayers for goodness and health and peace in the years to come, and we say amen. Uh, so we're still on the same page, 757 in the Old Plow, or 660 in the New Leviticus, chapter 1, verse 4. Yamdu, Kolat Sebet JPDS. This is for all of the students, faculty, families, and staff from JPDS. JPDS. If that's you, come on up. Amen. 
So for those who don't know, uh, JPDS stands for the Jewish Primary Day School. And the occasion for this Aliyah uh, is that JPDS is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And uh, the Jewish Primary Day School is one of them. Really, uh, there are several outstanding day schools in Washington, JPDS being one of them. And this is our occasion to kind of honor the school and also honor the families that have made the commitment of time and resources to make sure that their children have the finest Jewish education possible. Uh, so what I want to do is invite you to introduce yourselves and also mention the name of your children who actually have gone through the school. Some of them are not here and have graduated already, or who are in the school right now, so we get to know the JPBS community. So let's start here. I'm Tamina Goldstein. Um, I, my role at JPBS is a teacher, so my own children are not there, but I'm there with many fourth graders every day. Wonderful. Great. I'm Janet Tuick, and I'm with second graders. And I'm Naomi Edelson. I'm a parent of Rafi Shore. Rafi, raise your hand. He's in, he's in first grade at JPBS. Beautiful. My name is Susan Mitchell. My daughter, Elian Nider, went all the way through JPBS. And my son, Sam Nider, he, uh, was there from uh, pre-K through second, and he's a first grade student. Very nice. And I'm Louise Milkman, and my daughter, Gabby Milkman, is in first grade at JPBS and also is a tour school student here. Gabby, raise your hand. All right. Okay, Gabby. And I'm Judy Itkin, and this is my husband. Mr. Judy Itkin. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we spent 14 years at JPDS. Um, Samantha Greenberg, uh, David Greenberg, and Michael Greenberg, and they all now have since graduated high school. Michael is in Israel, just graduated JDS. So we've had a long history there. Beautiful. Well, actually, uh, Judy and Irv are among our JPDS pioneers who have dragged many other people into the school. So it's great to have you here. And I'm Marty Shore, and I'm Rafi Shore's father. Rafi, raise your hand. There you go. Twice you get to raise your hand. <laughs> no. No? Okay. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for your commitment, and hopefully you enjoy the school. And we hope to see you on the BMI many times from here on in, okay? Great. Okay. <laughs> We're now uh, in Leviticus chapter 1, verse 7, page 758 or 661. Where are we? Do you want to do the lesson together? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. There we go. Okay. 
Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vaed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kerbanu Laavodato Venatan Lanu Et Toreto Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Venat nu bene aharon ha kohen e shalom is beach ve archu et sim al ha eish ve archu bene aharon ha kohanim et anet achim et 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 a rosh ve et a pader Al ha'etzim asher al ha'esh, asher al ha'mizbeach. Vekir bo uchra'av yirchatz b'amayim, v'hiktir ha'kohen et ha'kol ha'mizbecha ola. Yishereach nichoach l'adonai. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, asher natan lanu Torah emeh, v'chaye olam natah b'tocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. So, milestones past and future, uh, when are you leaving? A week from Monday. Okay, so a week from now, uh, yeah, yeah. Tamar Lieberman and Anne Mazansen are leading on a Jewish heritage trip to Spain. Uh, Rabbi Leila. Led by Leila Berner. And Rabbi Marsha Prager. Wonderful. So it's going to be a great experience. So we wish you on the way a safe journey, a healthy journey, a journey filled with aha moments and learning and expansion. And we look forward to hearing your stories when you come back safe and sound. Wish you bon voyage and a safe trip. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll now invite people who would like to have a prayer of healing said for themselves or for a loved one to come forward. So we'll invite those who feel comfortable doing so to share the name of the person for whom you'd like a bracha said.
loved ones were fortunately ma a full and speedy recovery. While we're in the uh, healing space, I just want to, Erica, give you uh, Erica. Uh, Erica Fromer, we haven't seen for a long time. She's been battling a lot of illness. Erica, it's wonderful to see you back here this morning. Shabbat shalom and continued speedy recovery. We are on page 758, 4661, verse 10. 10. Good. <laughs> Hamivorach leolam vaed baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kevranu lavodato v'natan lanu et torato Baruch atah Adonai noten ha-torah Amen Amen Ve'in min ha-tzon korbano Min ha-kesavim O min ha'izim le'ola Zachar tamim yakrivenu Veshachat oto Al yerech hamizbeach Tzafona lifnei Adonai Vezarku benei Aharon hakohanim et damo al hamizbeach saviv venitach oto lintachav ve et rosho ve et pidro ve arach hako ve arach hakohen otam al al Ha'etzim asher al ha'esh asher al hamizbeach ha hamizbeach vehakerev vehakera ayim yirchatz ba'mayim vehakri vehikriv hakohen et hakol vehiktir hamizbecha. Ola hu isha ishe reyach nichoach la Adonai. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah emet v'chaye olam nata betochenu baruch ata Adonai. Noten HaTorah. Amen. So we want to offer a Birkat uh, Gomel, a, a prayer that said, uh, recovering from illness or a uh, s situation of danger for uh, Rabbi George Driesen. Uh, please turn to page 401. So, George will offer the bracha, and we will respond accordingly. The bracha at the top of the page. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Hagomel Echayavim Tovot Shegimlani Gimalani Kol Tov. Amen. Misha Gmalcha Tov Hu Gmalcha Kol Tov Sela. May the one who has bestowed upon you good continue to bestow upon you good. Amen. We are on page 759 or 
Page 762 or 662, Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1. Baruch and I Baruch and Ryan Baruch and Baruch and Ryan 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 Vaitsaak Olaa Shemen Shemela Shemen Venatan Venatan Aleha Livona the heavy El the Nearo on Hakohanim the Kamat Misham Melo Kumso Nisalta Umisham Naa Al Kol Livonata Victia Kohen et Azkarata Hamizbecha Ashe Ishe Reach Nichoach Ladonai Vanoteret Min Hamincha Laron Ulvanav Kodesh Kodashim Me Ishe Adonai Vichita Kriv Kaban Mincha Maafe Tanur Solet Halot Matsod Bululot Bashemen Urkike Matsod Meshuchim Bashamen Baruch <laughs> I invite you to stand for the lifting of the Torah. Yeah. 
Rato, 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 Rato. Yeah, how are you? Uh, yes, exactly. Rato, 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 The Haftarah for the morning is 43 and 44th chapters of the book of Isaiah, and the old plow is on page 762, the new one, 662. What do you mean, no? Did I have the wrong page? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, 979, I'm sorry. 979 in the old plow, 682 in the new one. I was opened the new one, that's why I had that. Um, so the Haftarah is actually a counterpoint to the Torah reading, which is all about sacrifice. And this is one of several passages from the book of Isaiah that indicates uh, the prophet saying that it's more what you bring of your heart than you bring of your offerings in terms of uh, agriculture or uh, harvest. Uh, Harry will be reading beginning chapter 44, uh, verses 1 through 10. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melech Avlaham Asher Bochar Ben Vihim Tovihim Ratzav Ibrahim Anemarim Bamet Baruch Ata Adonai Abocher Batorav Moshev Toho Vin Vihamet the Atashima Yaakov Abdi, Va Yisrael B'charti Vaho. Ko Amar Adonai Osecha, Ve Yitzercha Mi Beten Yazreka, Al Tira Abdi Yaakov, Ve Yishurun B'charti Vaho. Ki et sak ma'im al tzamehe, v'noz lihim al yabasha, et sak rochi al zarecha, uvirchati al tzetzaecha, v'tzamchu v'vein chatzir, karavim al yivlei ma'im. Zayo mar let an eye on ye, the zeh ye cravishem yakov, the zeh ye tov yato let on a high, the shame is rael ye hane. Koamahar at on a high milk is rael, the go alone on rights for old. Ani Rishon, Yani Achron, Umi Baladai, and Elohim. Umi Hamoni Yikra, Yagi Deha, Yarche Hadli, Misumi Yamola, Vio Tio, the Asher Tavona, Ye Yidulamo. Al tatif chadu mi al tir hu hu, chalo ho me ahaz. Hish mati chavi gati hi vi atem e dai. Haye shalo ha mi baladai, vi ain't suhur baladati. Yo tre thes el kulam tohu, ve chamude hem bal yo ilu. The Edehem came ha bar ye ruhu, Uval ye do, Le man ye voshu. Me a tsar ehe, Lufesel nasa, Lil tiko ee. 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam tsur kol haolam nihim tzadik bekol adorot haol anemah haomer v'yoseh hamdaber mekayim shekol dvarah pemet v'tzedek neman atahu Adonai Eloheinu v'nemanim dvarecha v'dvarachad midvarecha achor lo yashuv rekaham ki el melech neman v'rachman atah Baruch atah Adonai Hoel and Ammon behold Vara Rachem al Tion, ki he behaved Chayenu. Will I'm Chay Israel Toshi of Dime Ravi Amenu, Barucha Tarunai? Miss Amel Tion, Bivaneha Sam Chayenu, Adonai Lohenu, Bailey Yohan of the Abdecha, Dime Rayavo, Yagel they shave leva vote, Albani, Lebanim, Alabotam, Ube Chabet Fila, Karel Kohami, Barucha Tarunai, Mevi Shalom La Aha Al Hatora, Havi Al Havodaha, the Al Havim, the Yoma Shabbat Hazah, Shanata Talahanu, I don't know, Elohe, who leaked the Shabbalim Nuha, Lechavo, Ulti Fared. Al hakol Adonai Eloheinu, anachnu modihim lach umevarachim otach. Yit barashkum pamefiko chai tamid leolam vaed baruch atadonai mekahadesh hashabbat. I invite Bob Spurtis and David Silverman to the Bima to return the Torah to the Ark. Um, Beth Sperberichi will be our Chazanit for Musaf. Please turn to page 433 and rise. Yeah, hallelujah, shame Adonai, Kinis Gav, Shemo, Livado, Odo, Aleres, Vishamayim, Vaya. So, Pastor Johnny, I'm going to invite you to come back up. Uh, Pastor Johnny has agreed to teach us a few songs. If you, does everyone have a song sheet that you picked up on the way in? If not, uh, Kay and Deborah, would you be good enough, Laura, to just bring some of the song sheets in and, and need them? We'll hand them out. So raise your hand if you need a song sheet.
So by the way, uh, uh, some of you heard me tell the story, but when I, the first time I was at Pastor Johnny's church, and I taught this one song, it wasn't planned. I was in the service, and I was so moved by the spirit uh, in the church. By the way, Pastor Johnny's church looks like half of Badat Shalom, the half without the roof, <laughs> meaning they have a tent. They're in a tent, a white tent. So this is, we thought about this, uh, how much similarity there's between your church and our synagogue with the tent, but you just don't have the ceiling above it, right? So we're in this tent, and uh, uh, I was so moved by the Spirit, I walked up to him. He has a second in command. It was kind of like a cantor or a second so pastor. For, you have to say it's so hot. It's been. No, it's a school here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's usually very warm in, in Haiti. Uh, so the other pastor was leading part of the service so I could get to Pastor Johnny's ear, and I said, could I teach a song? It wasn't my plan. He says, sure. So I wanted some way to kind of give something to the community. So I taught this Shabbat Shalom song, which I think Pastor Johnny will sing at the end for us. Uh, and it took them about 15 seconds to pick it up and sing it so beautifully. Uh, it didn't sound exactly like I taught it, but <laughs> beautiful nonetheless. Uh, it is a great singing congregation. So I said to Pastor Johnny, as we were planning for the trip, maybe you'll bring some of your music to us here at Adat Shalom in this slot, and I present you Pastor Johnny. And shalom again. <laughs> and the, the first one, the first song is based on Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. And English, and I heard it last time during the serve, during the serve. Hey, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And I would like to sing it in French. And does anyone here who speak French? Oh, great. <laughs> great. Very good. Écoute Israël, l'éternel notre Dieu est le seul vrai Dieu. Ça c'est, it is the meaning in French. Écoute Israël, l'éternel notre Dieu est le seul vrai Dieu. Okay, une dernière fois, écoute Israël, l'éternel notre, notre Dieu est le seul vrai Dieu. Le seul vrai Dieu. Okay. Je vais, je vais, uh, I'm going to sing it alone and after you will join me. I would like two part of the um, of you to divide you. I would like to divide you in two part, and when after be relax with the song, and after have a first connection with the song, and one part will sing with the first level, and the second part will sing the second level. You say. Écoute Israël, l'éternel notre Dieu est le seul vrai Dieu. Écoute Israël, l'éternel notre Dieu est le seul vrai Dieu. Écoute Sing that? Okay? Four. Echo this
The second part, Écoute Israël, like a canon. Do it. Yes. I know Madame Pam is very great to do it this way. <laughs> With the, 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 the one part, we say, Écoute Israël, l'éternel notre Dieu. Meanwhile, the other part, we say, Écoute Israël, l'éternel, notre Dieu, est le seul Dieu. Écoute Israël, l'éternel, notre Dieu, est le seul Dieu. Deux notes de going to sing it the last time the, the, the part this part we, we, the, we say this, that part we say okay okay after four three four The second one. We are into singing now and queer. <laughs> the first one was Francais, and now we are going to sing to sing and queer. It says the word in, in English says, I love you and the name of the Lord. Yes, I love you and the name of the Lord. We are going to sing in both languages. First, in French and second, in English. I love you in the name of the Lord. Yes, I love you in the name of the Lord. Because I sing and knew the love of God. Yes, I love you in the name of the Lord. Mwen reme ou nanon senye ya. Mwen reme ou nanon senye ya. 
Oui, moi, remets où dans nos Seigneur L'homme est en haut. L'amour bon Dieu. Oui, moi, remets où dans nos Seigneur Ok. Écoute. One more time. Slow. Ok. singers <laughs> okay the third one is a Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom and the rabbi said to me that you know all the words
hear me sing it before, and if I make a mistake about the, the hair, you, you, you're going to help me. Okay. <coughs> Shabbat repos and shalom is la paix. And we to mix together the, the two words repos na la paix. Repos na la paix. And we can function so many songs. 